congratulations to Rhonda. I told the mayor she has more accomplishments than you do. <laughs> Not really, I have four pages here to read, so. <laughs> Good afternoon, I am Gail Farr, Vice President Bank Manager for BMO Harris Bank. On behalf of BMO Harris Bank, welcome to today's event. We are very pleased to be the presenting sponsor for the Rockford Chambers 2021 Community Priorities Series. At BMO, being a committed corporate citizen is an important part of who we are and how we approach our business. And that means supporting key community partners like Chambers of Commerce. We believe in the importance of hosting an event like this as our government leaders are critical to having a vibrant community with a strong economy. As part of our community outreach and support, BMO has introduced two loan programs for our women-owned businesses and black and Latino business owners. Please take a look at the flyers on your tables, and if you or someone you know can benefit from one of these programs, please reach out. We have also included them in the October edition of The Voice. Today it's my honor to introduce Tom McNamara, Mayor of the City of Rockford. In 2017, Tom McNamara won every precinct of every ward to become Mayor of the City of Rockford. In 2021, he ran unopposed and was named Mayor for a second term. Over the last five years, he has made significant progress in increasing job and educational opportunities, improving public safety, and strengthening neighborhoods. With more than 35% of the city's violent crime directly related to domestic violence, Mayor McNamara made fighting this issue one of his top priorities. In 2020, during the height of the pandemic, the city opened the first family peace center in the state of Illinois. The center, which serves victims of domestic and sexual violence, has already been awarded more than two million in federal, state, and local foundation grants, and has served more than 525 survivors. Aiming to increase educational attainment by eliminating the financial barrier to a college degree, Mayor McNamara developed the Rockford Promise NIU Scholarship, a program that provides Rockford Public School students the opportunity to attend Northern Illinois University tuition free. During his tenure, City Council has also passed the largest capital improvement plans in the city's history to improve local infrastructure. And I have a new street in my neighborhood with blacktop that looks wonderful, so I can attest to that. Thank you. <laughs> Through all of this progress, Mayor McNamara has consistently kept the tax levy flat or reduced it by leading an organization that lives within its means. More than 17 million has been left in the hands of city residents and business owners in the last five years. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Tom McNamara. So Gail is uh, absolutely right. Rhonda absolutely has more accomplishments. Congratulations, uh, Rhonda, again. And Gail, thank you and BMO Harris Bank for just being awesome corporate citizens in the city of Rockford. Also want to thank uh, Caitlin, want to thank Einer, the entire chamber board, and all of the members uh, for all the work. These past 18 months have been really difficult on everyone, but specifically small businesses. Uh, and the chamber continues to step up to support small businesses, so thank you to the chamber. Also want to say I uh, got my first question. Um, Tom, I wish I, by the way, I wish I could like read out all the tweets I get. That would be more fun than my speech. Um, I do it in like a slow jam. Um, but this one says, Tom, our table, we will give you $50 if you don't say 
C-O-V-I-D, uh, during your speech. I hope Jay Hanley has $50 on him. <laughs> because we have just went through a tremendous global pandemic, Jay. So when preparing uh, for this speech, I, I look back at last year's, and I know all of you remember every word I said. Uh, I talked about a whole host of challenges that our community was facing, from social, social justice concerns to a pandemic. I talked about businesses and citizens simply struggling to stay afloat. I really feel like this year I could just simply say ditto and be done. While we were hoping 2021 uh, would be the end of the pandemic, it really doesn't seem to be the case. At least, not yet. We know that this has not been an easy time for anyone. We encounter challenges that we all honestly probably felt we'd never see or face. Honestly, it's been personally and professionally taxing on every single citizen and business in our community. However, at the city, we could not allow this global pandemic to slow us down. <laughs> we wanted to take, uh, we didn't want to simply move through this pandemic, we really wanted to take advantage of this crisis. So our community would be stronger and would be more resilient when we come out on the other side of the pandemic. I am really proud of the progress that we've made in spite of potentially the largest challenges our city has ever faced. And even though I am the one standing in front of you today uh, reporting on the progress that we've made, I want to be incredibly clear. This progress is not Tom McNamara's progress and it's simply not just the city of Rockford uh, as an organization's progress. This is the city of Rockford staff. This is the city council, which we have a host of members. Uh, this is in numerous community partners from the chamber, the EDC, Region 1 Planning Council, the Rockford Park District, the CVB, RAVE, and many, many others. These are really our community's progress. So when I became mayor in 2017, I had four top priorities. Those were jobs, public safety, neighborhoods, and education. These four priorities all have a tremendous impact on our community and on your business. For businesses to thrive, they need to have trained and ready workforce in a safe and welcoming community. Those continue to remain to be my priorities, so we're gonna examine each one of those in our progress and shortcomings. So to keep, gr to keep growing our community, we need employment opportunities for our residents. We've had a lot of big wins recently as a city. Hard Rock Cas Casino is just one of them. Six casinos were approved in the casino expansion bill in 2019. We are the first of the six to pass each and every step of that process. We were the first. <laughs> we were the first to receive finding of preliminary suitability we were the first to sign a project labor agreement ensuring this casino is built by local men and women of our union trades. We were the, we were the first to have all of the investors approved. We were the first to be granted a supplier license. We were the first to be, begin construction on the temporary casino. And we will be the first to open by more than a year in just a few short weeks. This is a huge accomplishment for our community. It's not only going to be a destination for visitors, but it will be a large employer for our region. Hard Rock is currently hiring hundreds of employees for their temporary casino. Uh, there are also, when you look at the permanent casino, we'll have hundreds of construction jobs and even more permanent well-paying jobs. Another big win for our community was the new Amazon Fulfillment Center at the former Bonton facility that once sat vacant up in the northwest side on North Main Street, and they are now hiring 800 new employees. The Chicago Rockford International Airport continues to be a large employer and a big economic driver for our region. I think we can all be proud that our airport is still the fastest growing cargo airport in the world and has experienced record expansion. 
Earlier this year, the airport and AAR signed a multi-year agreement with United Airlines to use our facility as a maintenance hub for, the United, for United's Boeing 737 fleet and other aircrafts. And this agreement will run through 2025. The BMO Harris Bank Center is also an important regional draw and a critical economic asset to our area. It is essential that it remains a vibrant, a vibrant part of our community and our downtown. The city, along with the Chicago Blackhawks, the Rave Board, and the state of Illinois, earlier this year announced $23 million in a multi-year capital project to revitalize the BMO Harris Bank Center. These multi-million dollar improvements will provide a better home for our Rockford Ice Hogs, a better experience for, our, for the fans, and it will help us attract a more diverse, and it will help us attract more diverse entertainment opportunities. This investment was also made possible by the sale of the Rockford Ice Hogs uh, by Rave to the Chicago Blackhawks, solidifying this team to be the Blackhawks AHL affiliate and keeping this team in the city of Rockford through 2036. This is incredible, not only for our citizens, but for our businesses. Games and activities and events at the BMO Harris Bank Center bring thousands of people down to our city center and fill our restaurants and businesses on a regular basis. Also earlier this year, members of the Rockford Chamber of Commerce and the RADC formed the Greater Rockford Growth Partnership. I really do want to congratulate all those who came together to ensure that our business community has a better direction and it begins to speak with one unified voice. So thank you so much for the work that you've done. In the midst of all this success, I think we also have to talk about issues that are absolutely plaguing our city. Just like you, I'm concerned and furious over the amount of violent crime that's taking over our community. I can tell you it's our top priority. I am thrilled that Chief Carla Redd has now taken the helm of this phenomenal department. She has a history of community engagement and strong leadership, and I know those traits will serve our community well. There is no magic solution to solving the crime problem. We must use a comprehensive approach to reduce the violence that we're seeing a comprehensive approach that in ensures that we are holding violent repeat offenders accountable while simul simultaneously swimming upstream to help prevent and intervene so crime doesn't exist in the future. We recently expanded in our efforts to do this, we recently expanded our Office of Domestic Violence and Human Trafficking Prevention to now be the Office of Domestic and Community Violence Prevention. In addition to working with survivors and uh, survivors of domestic violence, sexual violence, and human trafficking, this office will now focus on youth programs that interrupt the cycle of violence and help children deal with their unprocessed trauma. One main objective of this office is to stop youth from committing crimes in the future. This seems maybe like an odd marriage of these two offices, but it's absolutely critical. This is important to all of us because 75% of the juveniles we arrested for violent offenses in 2016 and in 2017 either witnessed domestic violence or were direct survivors of domestic violence. We are developing programs to stop those who have experienced, to help those that have experienced the trauma and stop that school to prison pipeline. Some of the programs that we are doing and the specifics are Camp Hope, which mentors children from homes where they were exposed to domestic violence. The Step Up program, which allows youth who were involved in minor crimes to enroll in an adolescent family violence intervention program as an alternative to entering our court system. Our Juvenile Recovery and Crime Prevention Program, which aligns children and their families with whole family case managers for navigation through criminal justice, education, health, and social service systems. 
We have a no entry program, which seeks to lower the racial and ethnic disparities at the point of entry into our criminal justice system and prevents minors of color who have experienced trauma from entering into the school to prison pipeline by providing them increased access to effective trauma informed and trauma focused treatment. Our strategy also continues to include building relationships. We build those relationships with community service officers and with our rock houses. Our rock houses are where our officer is living in our neighborhoods. We just opened our third rock house in a par great partnership with Swedish American on Ravel. Building relationships of mutual trust between police agencies and their communities they serve are critical to maintaining not just public safety and effective policing. And Connect Rockford is also at the city working to build and nurture a more connected and thriving community. We're also stepping up our support of domestic violence survivors, realizing that this year, now more than 40% of Rockford's violent crime is domestic related. We opened the state's first family peace center in the midst of that global pandemic. The multi-agency, multidisciplinary service center provides services to victims of interpersonal violence. Stopping the cycle of violence by using the one-stop shop concept that has led to a reduction in homicides and an increased victim safety in cities all across our country. We're also working on a countywide program of handling victims of strangulation, ensuring early treatment of this injury, which can be fatal even after the incident. We're also working to part with, with partner agencies to make changes. A new partnership with the city of Rockford, the Winnebago County State's Attorney, and the Winnebago County Criminal Justice Coordinating Council is creating a new focused deterrence and reentry program to help serve those individuals returning to our community. We've also joined with Winnebago County and Rose Grants to launch a community co-responder program throughout Rockford and Winnebago County. This changes how we are now responding to mental health crisis calls. Law enforcement and clinicians work together to respond to calls involving anyone with a mental health crisis. So those are some of the longer term strategies, but you're probably sitting there thinking we have violence right now going on in our streets. We're absolutely stepping up our enforcement. And I will be the first to say, I believe we have a phenomenal police department at the city. We are equipping our officers with the latest technology and resources to try to deter, fight, and investigate crimes, including that we've increased our cameras in it throughout our community by nearly four times. We've put in place more than 60 mobile and stationary license plate readers. We've purchased social analytics software, gunshot detection software, and I want to be clear, the violence in our community is unacceptable, and none of us should be tolerating it. So, when we have residents who are gainfully employed and we can reduce crime, we can also have healthier neighborhoods. We've been working incredibly hard to find ways to improve our neighborhoods. So let's start with the big one, property taxes, which you all love to pay and we appreciate it. <laughs> so we have consistently reduced our property taxes or kept our levy flat. My administration has never increased property taxes. We've actually reduced them. That might, that might make us probably the only administration in Rockford's history to not increase your property taxes. It is critically important that we are good stewards of your tax dollars. So as Gail mentioned, by not taking that maximum, we are keeping $17 million, not on the table, we're keeping $17 million in residents' hands and in your hands as business owners, where it should be. We're also working to make sure that our residents and businesses have access to the latest technology. Earlier this year, City Council unanimously passed a development agreement with Sci-Fi Networks to develop a citywide fiber optic network. Under this agreement, the city will allow access and use of, the, of our right-of-way to the private company, which will pay for and install underground high-speed fiber optic network in front of every business and in front of every home in our city. 
That's more than 1,100 miles of fiber optic system that'll be laid in the next four years in our community. Then, SciFi will work with multiple service providers, which will offer services to residents and businesses in every Rockford neighborhood, including internet, TV, phone, and home security. This private $200 million investment in our city is a true game changer, bringing stronger, faster fiber optic network to our community. This agreement has, a, has the potential to help us fill that digital divide that was illuminated throughout the pandemic. <laughs> Damn, Jay, this is hard. <laughs> um, it will also help us attract uh, more high-tech businesses to our community. The next step in my dream would be for Rockford to be one of the first municipalities to be able to provide you internet service, which I think is a very real possibility. We're also continuing to work to reduce blight and increase property values in our neighborhoods and to strengthen our neighborhoods. And there's a host of programs that are doing that. You look at the land bank that lever leverages its legal ability to clear property titles and find qualified buyers for property. This returns an abandoned property, a once blighted property in your neighborhood, back to being productive and back to being on the tax rolls. To date, this newly created tool has sold 10 properties at about $250,000, and 10 doesn't seem like a lot unless you live next to one of those 10. So thank you to Region 1 Planning Council. The <laughs> we got an employee of <laughs> the trustee program sells publicly owned parcels and returns these properties back to productive use. And a huge thank you to Winnebago County uh, for getting this program changed. They've sold now more than 450 properties of sales of more than $1.4 million. On average, these parcels have been sitting in our community, not collecting taxes and being tax delinquent for more than five years. For structures, if you think about this, we conservatively estimate that the, the value of the repairs that we're seeing to these structures is four times their purchase price. So with that estimation, there is nearly seven million in new taxable value in our community. So think about it. Without these two initiatives, we would be losing seven million dollars in taxable value. You would have far more blight in your neighborhoods, which is not just blight, but havens for criminal activity. We're also at the city tearing down 80 to 100 homes per year, and we're investing also in our housing stock instead of just simply tearing them down. We are having programs at the city to invest in roofs and accessibility and minor home repairs and down payment assistance. We're also working on the infrastructure in our neighborhoods by investing 5.5 million in our neighborhood infrastructure that improves 200 blocks of local streets. We're putting $750,000 towards pedestrian safety, $80,000 towards reforestation of our community, and $4.25 million in residential water lines to take the lead out of our water system. We will have, in this current capital improvement plan, we will have no more bridges that are closed or load restricted in the city of Rockford. And when I took office, we had 17 of them. And if, and it's a big if, but if the federal government decides to finally make a vote on the infrastructure bill, which I would encourage them to do, we now will have more shovel-ready projects than we've ever had before because of the work of our public works team. We're also seeing some new developments when it comes to housing. We recently just supported a, the development of water power lofts, a $19.5 million project along South Main where there's 62 luxurious lofts being built. I'm sorry, 64 uh, luxury apartments being built. We also recognize that quality of life and the sense of pride is so critical to our residents to attract new residents and to retain our existing residents. The RACVB has done an incredible job of bringing more life and excitement to our neighborhoods and our business areas through the public murals and sculptures that they have done with so many partners. The park district is putting a greater emphasis on neighborhood parks and residential amenities all while maintaining our reputation as an amateur sports capital. We should really be applauding both of those organizations' work. 
That was a key. In February, in February, Crusader Community Health opened a brand new facility on West State Street. While this is an incredible asset for our entire city, it has real tangible impact on the neighborhood it's located in. I was at their grand opening. I'd urge all of you to go look at their beautiful facility. But I cannot begin to tell you the excitement that you could see by the neighbors who were so encouraged by this brand new development right in their own backyard. We are also thrilled that phase two of West State Street finally will be completed in 2022. Knowing, <laughs> we have an alderman of that ward. Uh, <laughs> Knowing that the first five years is, is when children learn critical social-emotional skills, we've expanded our partnership with Rockford Public Schools to reach more children under the age of five. The Early Head Start program also expanded its capacity by 50%. Program's goal is to help children succeed in school and in life. It provides a rich environment with activities to support learning in all areas of their development. We offer family support services, information, and referrals to assist parents and caretakers in their efforts to meet the basic needs of, the, of other family members. Last year, the City of Rockford announced a partnership that I am very proud of, the Rockford Promise uh, partnership with Rockford Promise Rockford Public Schools, Northern Illinois University. So now, if you are a parent of a child or you're a child who lives in, lives in Rockford, goes to Rockford Public Schools, earns a 3.0 GPA, we now will get you to Northern Illinois University tuition and general fee free. <laughs> we know that Promise programs throughout the country improve graduation rates, enhance workforce readiness, help attract and retain employees, decrease crime rates, and increase population. Those are all things we all want for our community. This fall, nearly 100 Rockford Public School students began their college journey at Northern Illinois University through this program. 59% of them were students of color, 79% of them were first generation college students. The number of Rockford Public School students to attend NIU this year compared to last year without the program increased by 380%. What an incredible opportunity for our youth and for our entire community. A free college education will open doors for them and change their future and their family's future forever. We can expand this program to further include phenomenal universities like Rockford University and Rock Valley College. With your help, I really do urge the business community, dive into Rockford Promise. We need your help, we need your funding, we need you as mentors of these young people. We can create a culture right here in Rockford of lifelong learning. That benefits us as a city, but it surely benefits you as a business. So as you can see, we've been incredibly busy throughout this pandemic. Our work doesn't stop here. We will continue to make progress and we will continue to improve our great city. I really hope that this time next year, I'll be able to be here and reflect back on this pandemic, but to get us beyond this, this is getting hard, to get us beyond this pandemic, I really encourage you to encourage your employees to get vaccinated, incentivize it, considering requiring it. In order, in order for all of us, I know we're tired of the mask mandates, we're tired of the, all of it, but to get beyond it, we know what works. So get vaccinated and encourage others to do so. Lastly, it really is an honor for me to serve as a mayor of the city of Rockford. I believe we've absolutely taken advantage of this pandemic and the crisis that has followed. We are not gonna go backwards. Instead, we're gonna continue to push forward and we are gonna make this city a city that every single resident can be proud of and all of your businesses can thrive in. Thank you.